Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. In this video, I'd like to talk to you about what are the most common lung diseases. So what are the most common things that could affect the lungs? And I'm going to probably structure this in uh, where the condition might be affecting the lungs by going to the structure of the lungs and the respiratory symptom, uh, system a little bit. So basically, when we're talking about lung disease, we could be talking about a condition that could affect the little tubes that go inside the lungs or the airways. So it could be an airways condition. It could be something that affects the tissue within the lungs, so the spongy tissue of the lungs, and that would be more of a parenchymal lung disease, we would call it, something that affects the structure of the lung. It could be a condition that affects the lining outside the lung, which is the pleura, so that could be pleural disease, and that could be a lot of things going on there. Or it could be things that affect um, the lungs acutely, and this could be related to the inner uh, airways, so getting an infection inside the bronchial tree, inside the airways, inside the lungs, deep inside the lungs, or it could be conditions that affect the vessels that feed the lungs and collect bl blood from the lungs that has been enriched with oxygen. So it could be a pulmonary vascular disease. So all of these things could be part of the spectrum of lung conditions. So we're talking about a lot of conditions. But the most common ones for each of these categories I think is important to be aware of and just things that might happen. So hopefully you'll find this video helpful. I'm going to start probably with infections because these are the most common things that people may experience related to their breathing. And these could range from things that uh, when we're talking about the lungs specifically, we're not necessarily talking about the common cold. So if you're getting a runny nose, if you're sneezing, you're coughing, that's probably a general viral infection and it could be something related to the upper airway, so above the throat, let's say. If we're talking about infections affecting the lower parts of the respiratory system, we may be talking about acute bronchitis in the first instance and this is usually a condition very common we probably all had it at some point in time when we get maybe a viral infection, a cold or something like that, but we are starting to get produce quite a lot of phlegm that, and we have a bit of cough, we feel a bit unwell and it all seems to be coming from here. We feel like there's a little bit of a pain or discomfort around here. We're coughing, we're bringing up phlegm, it could be green, ugly, all these things. So this, these are symptoms of acute bronchitis. Now, if the infection is deeper within the lungs, more on one side, we call that pneumonia. So if the infection really affects the deeper sacs of the lungs, the alveolar sacs, we call that pneumonia. It's an infection, inflammation. It's generally the inflammation that's trying to fight off the infection that's causing all of these symptoms. People with pneumonia are really unwell. So generally, it's not, an, you don't feel as if you're having a normal cold. It could be something that's really, really bad. You might be sweating, you might be having a high temperature, you might be feeling really, really poorly. You could be uh, feeling like you're fainting. So people who had pneumonia generally have quite a, significant symptoms and they feel really, really unwell. They might experience some chest pain as well on one side, uh, but generally it's something that needs to be diagnosed in a hospital setting. Probably uh, after the, the, long the, the doctors would listen to your chest, they will figure out that there's some crackles on one side of the chest, but not the other. You are uh, in this picture where you've got uh, all the symptoms of a pneumonia. They may do a chest x-ray and it shows some shadowing on one lung, for example. These are things that might guide us in that direction. Now, there can be a lot of causes for pneumonia, a lot of bacteria that could be causing that sometimes it could be viral we, we see that sometimes so uh, not always easy to tell whether it's viral or bacterial until you have a lot more tests done so these would be the infections affecting let's just say uh, the lungs then we need to talk about again sticking to the airways airways diseases these are very very common so we we have all heard about asthma we've maybe heard about COPD chronic obstructive pulmonary disease maybe bronchiectasis. So let's talk about all of these a little bit. So asthma is a condition in which there is inflammation in the small little airways leading deep into the lungs. So we're not necessarily talking about a condition that affects the large airways, so like the trachea. We're generally talking about the bronchioles. So as the, tr the trachea uh, bifurcates into two bronchi, then these keep uh, branching, branching, branching. When we reach the little small ones that don't actually have a cartilage around them, we call these the bronchioles. It's important that they don't have cartilage around them because this creates some particular situations. If you've got inflammation that's generally allergic in nature in those, in the wall, in the inner wall of these little tubes, this is actually the underpinning of asthma. 
asthma is an inflammatory condition. I need to underline that a little bit if I could, because um, it is driven by the inflammation. So treating asthma actually requires that we treat the inflammation because otherwise we might still getting the symptoms. Now, the symptoms of asthma generally are uh, your chest every now and then going tight, you might be wheezy, you might be coughing, you might be breathless. You have these episodes that can be triggered sometimes by exposure to certain things you might be allergic to. So uh, this could be maybe dust exposure. It could be certain medications that cause the asthma. Some people get it on exertion. So when after they've finished um, a run or some exercise, it's maybe five, 10 minutes after they start to get a, a, an attack where they go chest, uh, their chest goes tight. So it's not necessarily the breathlessness during the exertion, but generally after, that could be exercise-induced asthma. There could be uh, a lot of reasons why people may, may get this condition. It generally affects people who are younger, so it's uh, usually diagnosed, I would say, in the in the first half of life. Generally, childhood, adolescence, early adult, uh, adulthood, that's when most people get diagnosed with asthma. There can be late onset asthma later in life, but it's generally more rare. And we need to think about other potential conditions, those situations. Now, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, is uh, long term. Not a lot of people maybe are as aware of this as they are of asthma. But chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is very, very common. It's one of the main causes of death, actually. So it's important to be aware of this because it's also, in most situations, a preventable condition because it's very, very tightly related to cigarette smoking. So a lot of people who develop chronic obstructive pulmonary disease have smoked. And it's generally a condition that occurs later in life, so after the age of 40. 50. This is when most people get diagnosed with COPD, and it's usually in people who have smoked for many, many years or have worked in environments where they've inhaled fumes, dust, things that could be noxious for the lungs. This is when most people develop COPD. Now, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD is a combination actually of chronic bronchitis and emphysema. And these are two conditions that are very different. So chronic bronchitis is basically a little bit of inflammation in the main airways, so in the, the large airways, you could have a bit of inflammation that is generally driven by the body's own defenses that are trying to clear all the particles that we're inhaling. So if we're inhaling lots of dusts, uh, fumes, cigarette smoke, our own respiratory symptoms, uh, our system is detecting that that's something abnormal and they're trying to clear the airway. You have little uh, cilia that are always trying to collect and trap all these things that we're, we're basically inhaling. There's mucus on the inside of the airway that's secreted by the, the, some cells in the airway wall. So that mucus is trying to trap these debris and the little cilia are trying to kind of get them out. Now in chronic bronchitis, because we keep inhaling the toxic things, our body's defenses get a little bit overwhelmed. So they start to produce more and more mucus. So this is what's driving this cough. It's basically the body's reaction to try to clear what we're inhaling. So that's the component of chronic bronchitis in uh, the scope of the larger scope of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, so COPD. Now, when we talk about emphysema, we talk about destruction within the actual deep sacs of the lungs. So we're talking about the alveoli, which are like the little end bits of uh, of the airways where the oxygen and CO2 are exchanged between the air and the blood. And these are little, little sacs. If you can imagine them, they're tiny, tiny little structures called alveoli. And the walls may become destroyed in people who inhale a lot of things that are noxious, especially oxidating things. So your body would react again, trying to clear the smoke, trying to clear these particles that you're inhaling. And its own immune system may produce things that oxidate these things, but they also destroy the normal tissue. So this is generally what's going on. It's an oversimplification, but you may have thinning out of the lung basically in, in these areas where all the smoke, all the things go in. So it's a combination of that, those dilated areas in the lung that don't really have healthy tissue anymore, and the bronchitis, which is, again, the body's uh, own um, defense trying to clear these things. So these two come together to create obstruction. So basically, people who have COPD cannot get the air out of their lungs fast enough because the structure is affected in the airway and in the deeper parts of the lungs. So this is, again, a condition that is in many situations preventable. There is a predis there is for sure predisposition uh, for some people to get it more than others. 
but generally risking it by smoking too much and inhaling a lot of dust and particles is probably not a good idea. So that's something that could potentially be prevented. Now, we've talked a little bit about airway conditions. I didn't mention bronchiectasis. Maybe I'll brief briefly talk about that. So bronchiectasis is a condition in which there is dilatation in in the actual airways going into the lungs, there may be some areas which are a little bit widened and mucus can pool there. So I think I'm gonna leave it at that. It's just, as you can imagine, there will be difficulty clearing the mucus. It will be maybe coming in large quantities when people develop bronchiectasis. There could be a lot of reasons for that, some related to certain infections, uh, but some people just may be again more predisposed. Now, when we talk about parenchymal lung disease, lung disease affecting the actual structure of the lung, this is where we have a host of situations where we may develop lung disease. So I would say that the main thing to, to remember here are conditions in which we develop um, something called interstitial lung disease. Now, interstitial lung disease basically means that it's a lung condition affecting the lung interstitium or the little uh, walls separating the air containing structures and the vessels. So this is basically the little membrane that separates the blood and the air. And there can be thickening there. Sometimes this could be due to inflammation and this could be associated to um, certain conditions affecting the rest of the body. For example, connective tissue disease would be one of them. So things like rheumatoid arthritis or scleroderma can sometimes affect the lungs and cause a little bit of inflammation. That inflammation can turn into scarring, so scar tissue within the lungs. Sometimes the scar tissue can occur without a known cause, and we call that in some cases idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis or idiopathic nonspecific interstitial pneumonia, so or NSIP. There are a lot of terms in the realm of interstitial lung disease, but it's basically conditions in which there's thickening in that membrane, separating the air coming in through your airways and the blood vessels. And of course, that can lead to uh, respiratory failure down the line, difficulties getting enough oxygen in to your body, difficulties breathing as the lungs harden due to the fibrosis. So there could be a lot of things there. Now, let's talk a little bit about the pleura. So the pleura is basically a thin membrane surrounding the lungs on the outer side of the lungs. And there is a pleura that covers the lung and then there's also a pleura that covers the inner side of the chest because the lungs need to slide you know when we're trying to inhale deeply when we're trying to inflate our lungs the lungs need to slide to be able to expand and slide within the chest cavity so we have the pleural membranes that cover the inside of the the rib cage and we've got also this little pleural membrane that goes over the lungs as well so you've got a, a situation if you can imagine a little plastic bag right and you've got two surfaces in between these two surfaces there is a very tiny amount of fluid so that is like a lubricant so when we're trying to expand our lungs it allows the two uh, little sheets to slide one against each other and this allows us to breathe easily now sometimes when you have pleural disease which could be again triggered by many things it could be triggered by infection it could be triggered by um you know, inhaling certain things like asbestos that can cause pleural disease as well. It could be a malignancy in some cases, so a type of cancer. It could affect uh, this inner lining of the lungs and you may develop a lot of fluid there. The fluid can become infected. When you have a lot of fluid in that space, it can compress the lungs a little bit, so making it harder to breathe. We call that a pleural effusion. When we have fluid on the outer side of the lungs, between the rib cage and the lungs, uh, that's the pleural space in which fluid can accumulate. Now, there can be air that accumulates there. There's normally no air in there. But for example, in the instance of trauma, so someone who has an accident, for example, they have a, a hit to their chest, they may sometimes um, have a little tear in the in the pleural surface covering the lung allowing some air to escape from the lung and go within this space between the rib cage and the lung and this is something called a pneumothorax pneumothorax so this is when we have air around the lungs and again this could cause pain or it could cause a little bit of pressure to build up there, especially the, if there's a valve sort of a scenario in which the air can enter the pleural uh, cavity so on the outer side of the lungs, but it cannot go back because there's something that's blocking. It's like a valve system. And that can create more and more air buildup, which can again press on the lung. And the lung collapses a little bit. And that's when people become you know, quite breathless. They are in pain. So that may require sometimes to drain the air out or to drain the fluid if the fluid was a problem. So these would be uh, conditions that could affect the outer lining of the lungs. 
Now, I think we've uh, I've briefly mentioned that sometimes we could uh, talk about pulmonary vascular disease. So we've talked about the airways, we've talked about the lung tissue itself, we've talked about the pleural surface around it, but actually there are blood vessels that go into the lungs from the heart that basically collect the oxygen that the, the, the lungs are bringing in, and then that blood needs to go back into the rest of the body. So it's basically a system in which the blood returns to the heart, it's pumped through the lungs, going, goes back into the other side of the heart, and then goes into the rest of the body. When you have uh, conditions that affect the vessels between especially the right side of the heart and the lungs, that's when we can have problems that may manifest themselves as uh, respiratory symptoms. So people may become breathless. In many situations, we, we talk about uh, conditions such as pulmonary embolism. So this is basically when something blocks some of the vessels that go into the lungs. Or uh, we may talk about pulmonary hypertension, or when the blood pressure between the right side of the heart going into the lungs is increased. So in the pulmonary artery, the artery going from the heart, to the right side of the heart to the lungs, if that pressure increases, it can lead to a circulatory problem impairment within the lungs. So your body may not be able to keep up with the demands of oxygen. So when you're trying to do some exercise, you're trying to move around, if the circulation is improved, is impaired through the lungs, your body cannot meet its oxygen needs as you're increasing, because when you're trying to move around, when you're doing something strenuous, your body consumes more oxygen than usual. So you need your body to be able to react quickly. Now, pulmonary hypertension, so increased pressure between the right side of the heart and the lungs can occur for a number of reasons. Sometimes there's no good reason for it, and you call that idiopathic pulmonary hypertension, or we could have other conditions that could be associated with um, um, something affecting the lung vessels as well. And this could be generally in other uh, conditions affecting the rest of the body. So when we talk about connective tissue disease, we talk about the support. Connective tissue just basically means that it's the, the tissue that supports the cells around the, the body, around the organs of the body. So there could be situations in which there is an immune reaction to that tissue, which there's inflammation in the connective tissue, and that can affect because it's present also in the lungs, in the vessels, in other organs, it could affect the body as a whole. So people may develop actually pulmonary hypertension in this context, or it could be related to a heart condition. So if you have a significant heart disease, that again may lead to uh, back pressure increasing because the, the, the heart cannot really clear the blood that's going through the lungs. So that could again cause pulmonary hypertension. Or if you have significant lung disease, so for example, someone who has very severe emphysema, they have very severe lung fibrosis, it may mean that the space for the vessels to, to pass through the lungs is narrowed. So there's, there's sort of a loss of the vascular volume. So when the heart's trying to pump that blood through the, the lungs, it has less space to go through and it increases the pressure, impairs the circulation, and it can add to the breathlessness that's caused by these other conditions that may be affecting the lungs. So there are, like you say, a lot of situations in which we, people may develop pulmonary hypertension. So this high pressure between the right side of the heart and the lungs. And the final thing that I'd like to mention is that people can develop pulmonary embolism. I've mentioned this word before. So this is when something blocks the, uh, the vessels going into the lungs. Usually this is to do with clots, blood clots, that tend to develop in the lower limbs, so in the legs, in the pelvis, in the deep veins within the legs or the pel pelvis, and these clots can migrate up, go through the heart, be pumped into the lungs, and then they block off certain segments of the lung. This is when we have a thromboembolic uh, lung disease or thrombo, uh, thromboembolism. So basically this will pulmonary thromboembolism or pulmonary embolism in short, or PE, you may feel, feel, uh, find this in different ways. But this is when you have this blockage. Now, normally this is treated with blood thinners or anticoagulants to try to uh, stabilize that clot so you're not getting more of the clot and then the body tries to isolate that clot and kind of uh, let uh, the blood flow around it. But in some instances, people can develop actually pulmonary hypertension, so high blood pressure between the right side of the heart and the lungs after they've had a clot that went into the lung and blocked some of the circulation because it just increases the pressure in the rest of the, the vessels that are permeable and that allow the blood to pass. So I think this is a big overview of what lung diseases we may have. I hope you found it helpful. And if you have further comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget, I have quite a lot of videos on my channel about lung disease. So if you find these helpful, feel free to, to search for other things by clicking on, the, on my name under the video and just exploring a little bit. All the best and good health to you.